So what I thought we would do um, just until afternoon tea time um, is have a look at some examples of sort of crowdsourcing and participation in, um, in the GLAM space. Uh, so I've got a few examples to, to work through and depending on what devices you've got with you and um, what you feel like doing, I'd encourage you to, to think about playing along. Um, Bonnie's already mentioned Trove today and I think there's quite a lot of love for Trove in the room. Um, if you've never made a Trove edit, um, this could be the occasion on which you do this. So um, we're going to be hearing a little bit from later on from Donna about uh, digitization. Um, and one of the problems of digitizing um, archival collections is um, then get making that into something that is useful. People in the open source and particularly open data space um, have a well-founded hatred of the PDF. Um, <laughs> A PDF of a table is not open data. Um, so we but we need to be able to make that step from digitizing a hard copy document um, by scanning it into getting it into something which is useful. So um, one of the ways in which we do that is with OCR, um, but that has its own problems. And so a lot of GLAM institutions have turned to the power of the crowd to try and um, address this problem of um, the errors which are introduced uh, in the digitization process, um, creating something that is then uh, useful to the research community at the other end. So this um, is an example from the State Library of New South Wales, where they've invited people to participate um, in transcribing materials from their oral history collection. You can listen to um, materials from the Sound Archive and uh, contribute uh, transcriptions, helping to, to make that material more accessible. Um, this is an example from the National Archives in the US. Um, yes, the government is currently shut down. Um, but what they have um, are what they call citizen archivist missions, which invite people to participate in um, activities like um, transcribing or labeling uh, collections. They um, will theme it around particular uh, activities or um, events in the calendar. So Martin Luther King Day, uh, which occurred recently in a, um, the National Archives, had a whole bunch of activities around uh, the civil rights movement in the US, which they were inviting people to, to go on a citizen archivist mission um, and contribute to. Um, so this one is um, called Distributed Proofreaders. Um, and you can sign up here as a volunteer. And they're creating um, um, e-books out of public domain books. I was playing around with this um, recently. And once you've signed on, um, they give you a selection of things which you can help to proofread. Um, my French and German are probably not up to me being able to usefully contribute proofreading to that. Um, but just having a quick look at um, this example, um, they invite, um, you, have to, you have to earn your, your P2 status as a proofreader. Um, to, when you first start out, um, you just get to, do, get to do the basics where you compare the digitized image with the, um, with the, the OCR text and can make corrections. And if I can find the link again, I will be able to show you what that looks like. Um, and I had this yesterday. <laughs> um, Yeah, so they have several levels of, of proofreading that go into um, their, into this whole process and they have a, a word list as well that you're meant to, to work to wor work with um, to make sure that you are actually introduce, um, actually correcting text, not introducing 
whole new eras. Um, I have complete, uh, completely lost. Can anybody see where you're meant to click to start? <laughs> okay, I'm going to abandon that one. Um, but this one, of course, is Trove. Um, you can very readily create a user account on, on Trove. And from there, you can start contributing corrections. Um, a lot of the corrections come from researchers who are using the collections um, in their own work. And it's a, it's a small thing uh, for them to um, make, make corrections to the OCR as they go. Part of signing up as a Trove correct uh, you do have to agree that you will, um, you will only be correcting texts. They have had instances of people going through Trove and trying to remove information that's embarrassing to them or to their extended family. That's not what being a Trove editor is all about. <laughs> um, but um, just taking this as an example, um, an art, a historical newspaper article about the Communist Party in Australia, we can see that, um, for, like here for instance, um, there's a little blob on the original text, which is the sort of thing which is, you know, it's t still totally human readable, but it confuses computers. So um, that's, we've got an error here, and we can fix that text. Um, so it's to, no, oh dear, I was logged in. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave that. Um, finally, the example that I wanted to, to share with you is, um, Bonnie's already mentioned the work of the wizard rag. Um, <laughs> Tim Sherratt, who really is a, um, a force of nature in this open glam and digital humanities space. Um, this is a project he and his partner Kate are working on, um, transcribing records from um, the era, from the White Australia policy era, and inviting people to help with um, labelling and transcribing uh, records in order to make them more searchable and usable uh, to the research community. Uh, yeah, so those are just some examples of the ways in which um, open, open source and uh, is transforming the way that GLAM institutions are able to do their work and engage with their user communities. I think it's, it's quite a meaningful thing to, to contribute to a project like this, to contribute to a national resource as valuable as Trove. Um, and really, I think, as um, Eloise was talking about, as we move from being um, just passive consumers of the contents of GLAM institutions uh, to really starting to, to interact with them and to engage with cultural heritage in, in more meaningful ways. Uh, so yeah, that was just what I wanted to explore with you very briefly before afternoon tea. Now afternoon tea is catered, there'll be food over in building one um, where the reg desks are or in building 11 um, and there is of course um, pocket hacking um, happening <laughs> if you have garments in need of pockets. I would strongly recommend you join that crew. And Otherwise, we will be back after afternoon tea to hear from Donna and then have our lightning talks. Thank you. <laughs>